everyone, I'm Rachel English, Director of Space Foundation Discovery Center. Today I'm joined by Emily, you're one of our space education specialists, and I am so excited about our conversation. Me too, it's gonna be so fun. We are talking about one of my favorite artifacts here in the museum, and our registrar, Erica, has given us exclusive behind the scenes access to it. So cool. It's gonna be so much fun. Today, we're talking about the Scott Carpenter Space Analog Station. So Emily, what do you know about the Scott Carpenter Station? You know, I know a little bit as of right now, but mm -hmm. what I'm really curious about is this logo, the Space Life Sciences. I haven't really seen that one before. And you wouldn't, it wasn't used very often. Mm. So the Scott Carpenter Station is designed as an educational tool to teach school right. kids around the country what life in space was like. Hmm. We often use underwater environments as an analog for space exploration. That makes and a lot so of sense. The Scott Carpenter Station was doing that kind of in a real world scenario. And hmm. it sat at the bottom of the ocean just off of the coast of Florida. Cool. Which is also why it's yellow. Because yellow is really easy to see underwater. Yeah. And so it would have been bad if we you know, misplaced our submarine. Right. Lost it. <laughs> <laughs> when we did a restoration of the outside of the submarine mm -hmm. back in 2017, that logo okay. was actually one of the hardest things for us to reproduce oh. because it hadn't been used very often. And we had a lot of trouble finding high quality photos of it. Mm. That makes sense. Well, I love the outside. It's very cheerful. And I'm super excited to be able to go check out the inside. Let's go check it out. All right, let's go. All right, so it looks like we're gonna go under. And then up. Under. So watch your head. <gasps> Whoa. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Isn't this cool? Welcome to the Scott Carpenter Station. Oh my goodness. Well, I will pop a spot right here. Oh. And <laughs> as you can see, this is a cramped space. It is tiny. <laughs> Tell me your first impressions. Well, my first thoughts are that it's definitely pretty cramped, right? Mm -hmm. Just getting in here was a little bit of a, of a challenge. Um, and also, I love all of this signage to really, you really get to know like what the crew must have been doing as they first entered, you know, the tasks they had to take care of. Yeah, so really we're cool. kind of in this kind of wet room space mm. in the station where you'd be shedding your oxygen tank, your mask, right. your scoot, any kind of scuba suit that you might be wearing. Mm. We don't want to take anything wet into the crew section right. of the submarine. We're going to yeah. see a lot of specialized equipment, a lot of carpeting actually inside the submarine. That and so, <laughs> don't ask, you'll have to ask NASA about the carpeting. <laughs> um, and so we wouldn't want to take any of our wet equipment from this room. Totally. Should we check out the crew cabin? Yes, let's go check it out. Okay. <laughs> There is no beautiful way to move through this. Wait, so how did you use... Oh. You got it, you got it. You know, huh, huh. All right, through the power of movie magic, here we are. We're in the crew compartment of the Scott Carpenter station. Wow. It's small. It is very cramped. It is so yeah. small. We are sharing this space right now with our cameraman, Kenneth. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's wow. a little bit different even just sitting where we were before. Absolutely. Well, before, there was a little bit of airflow coming through just because of that open hatch, but in here, it definitely feels a little stuffy. Now, mm. we don't have any of the light support systems on right now. Sure. So this isn't quite exactly what it would have been like. We'd have some lights in here. Okay. We would have some airflow, but that sense of like being enclosed, that wouldn't go away. Right. So you can imagine the darkness, right, outside the windows because you wouldn't have as much light because we would be so far below the surface. Underwater. Yeah, we, we might not, we might see some shapes, but we definitely wouldn't have the light coming in the windows like we do right now. Right, for sure. And it has a, Definitely like a sea smell. <laughs> Does. And if we think about we just shed all of our equipment, right. there's damp coming from just the other side of right. this wall back here. So it would it would probably smell like the ocean pretty right. strongly. You're probably not really showering. You might be taking some sponge baths. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it would get a little a little smelly in here yeah. over eleven days. <laughs> 
so this is where the crew would spend all of their time. But this is what early astronauts, this is the space they had to work with. This is about the size of a Gemini or Apollo capsule. And so it really kind of gives you that analog for what living in space might be like. So true. Does it make you want to go to space? <laughs> you know, I used to think I wanted to go to space, but I'm not so sure anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is such a tight compartment. Um, and I think that, you know, as you were to do life in here, you know, they spent up to 11 days in this station, you know. I can't imagine not going to get some sunshine outside or a breath of fresh air. Um, it definitely would impact you, I think. Yeah, sure. it really, to me, emphasizes the importance of teamwork as all of these space Absolutely. companies are assembling crews. Yeah, if you and I had a, had a fight, right. well, there's nowhere to go cool off. Nope. We'd have to deal with our problems <laughs> yeah. right here. <laughs> So let's check out some of what's going on here on our front panel. Cool. We've got some of our emergency systems. So if we were to lose oxygen, if the airflow had a problem, mm. we've got a power fail and a high water alarm. So again, we are mm. underwater. So if we had anything happening to the station, we would be able to communicate with the surface. Down here we have our mini fridge. So oh. again, the station has everything that you would need for your 11 day stay our chairs reclined for us yeah. to sleep in there would have been a little microwave we'd have a tv actually because mm. the main goal of the scott carpenter station was to talk to students mm. and so the crews that went down on the scott carpenter station would actually call into classrooms all over the country and even classrooms in canada above the Ar arctic circle wow and they would talk about what living in space is like using this station as an analog, just like we're using it right now. So cool. I would have loved to have been one of those students in that class and see, you know, what this would have been like actually underwater. So does being inside here make you want to learn more about the Scott Carpenter station? Oh my gosh, absolutely. I have so many more questions about <laughs> everything involving this station. So there's always more information to be found on our website. You can go to discoverspace.org. But I don't know about you. I'm feeling a little stuffy. Yeah, I think I'm ready for the fresh air that is available for us. Outside. Yeah, so I think <laughs> let's give one wave out the window and then we'll head out. <laughs> All good. right. Bye. Bye. Bye.